now for all of you. I'm going to talk about the family. And we know it all starts with the home. I want you to think about that. And I'm going to read our scripture text, Psalms 127, verses 1 through 5, I think. It's not a long text, and we're going to hang out here for a while. And it says, except the Lord build the house, they labor in vain that build it. Mm -hmm. Except the Lord keep the city, the watchman waketh, but in vain. Mm -hmm. It is vain for you to rise up early, to sit up late, to eat the bread of sorrows, mm -hmm. for he giveth his beloved sleep. Right. Lo, children are an heritage of the Lord. And the fruit of the womb is his reward. As arrows are in the hand of mighty men, so are children of the youth. Happy the man that hath his quiver full of them. They shall not be ashamed, but they shall speak with the enemies in the gate. Let us go to our Heavenly Father in prayer. Our most wise and gracious Heavenly Father, the Father of great mercy, the Father of great love, but most of all, the Father of the resurrection of the life. Father, we come to you today continually needing your mercy that you provide for us every morning, Father. And you know that temptation has its way in each one of our lives, Father. And sometimes we surrender to that temptation. So at this time, before we get into your lesson, Father, we're going to confess our sins. We're going to repent of our sins in order that we can have great fellowship with you through your Son, Jesus Christ, Father. And Father, as I break the bread of life, let me come in the power of the Father, the power of the Son, and the power of the Holy Spirit, and let it be none of wrath. And if there's someone out there today who know they need to repent of their sins or to get baptized into Christ, let them do it for us eternity late. Amen. In Christ Jesus' name, let us say, amen. amen. It all starts at home, everybody. My home, when I say my home, I'm talking about your home, but I'm reading it from the first person. My home is a sacred haven of peace, <laughs> love, and joy. No matter what type of dwelling, its location, size, structure, it's my home. I create an environment of security, love through my thoughts and words. Peace radiates from my heart, flowing to every corner of my residence. With gratitude, I offer a blessing to my home. I bless the walls of my home, for they contain the love that radiates from my soul. I bless the windows that let in the light, the doors that welcome each person who enters. I bless every room and its purpose. I bless the roof that protects me from the outside elements. Love is in my home for God is in my home. The point is God need to be in your home. If you got God in your home you got love in your home. Amen. 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 May those who enter feel the peace and welcome that abide in my home. If we fail to recognize God in every aspect of our life, it is vain. He said you will eat the bread of sorrows. And when you look at verse number one, he says, accept the Lord. Thus mean singular and pacific. Accept the Lord build the house. The house. Mm -hmm. That means let's, he put it together. So when he looks at it, he says, I'm not even talking about you, Ralph. Mm -hmm. I'm not even talking about your wife. I'm talking about me. Right. He said, except I build the house. You get your instruction from me. If you don't get your instructions from me, you're doing it in vain. Mm -hmm. Y'all understand that? Amen. Yes, the husband is the head of the house. But God teaches the husband how to build the house. So you see the word except me exclusive. Only me. He don't need no help from me. He just needed me to get in the book to see what he's taught me how to do it. He said except the Lord build what? The house. They. They. Wonder who is the they. Pacific. That's pluralized. Am I right? They. Husband? No. Wife? No. Children? No. Teachers? No. Psychologists? No. Politics? No. Government? No. Social media? No. Except the Lord build the house. They labor. If you let anybody build your home except God, you're going to labor in vain and eat the bread of sorrows. 
Is that right, everybody? Yes, he says. He's the one. He's the architect of the home. We didn't start the home. God started the home. He constructs the home with the fruit of the Spirit. He gives us our own site manager, which is called the Holy Spirit. See, the house, the home, is where you put your morals, right. your values, and your ethics. Right. Now, I don't know about you, but the, and I ain't talking about it might be some teachers out there today. And I ain't talking about you neither. But the majority of these teachers, I don't want them teaching my children my, their morals, right. their values, and their ethics. Right. And it's very important that we learn to what? Teach our children their morals, their values, and their ethics. Now when you're talking about their values, that's the importance or worth of something. A person's principles, his standards, his behavior, one's judgment of what is important in life. Are we teaching our children that God is the most most important source in their lives. Yes, we want them to get an education. Yes, we want them to be successful. Yes, we want them to be prosperous. But guess what? If they don't have God, as they go through this world, they're going to be laboring in vain and they're going to have plenty of sorrows in their lives. Amen. What about morals? Let's think about morals. A person's standards of behavior are beliefs concerning what is and not acceptable. Do they know right from wrong? Right. Let me tell you, our children don't know right from wrong. If you don't teach them right from wrong, they're not going to learn it at the schoolhouse. Right. I'm trying to tell you, everybody. Right from wrong. Amen. Morals. What about ethics? Those are moral principles that governs a person's behavior. What is good or evil? Now remember this, morals and ethics are different. Morals do not apply to businesses. Businesses don't care if you cohabitate. Businesses don't care if you have an abortion. Business don't care if whether you have same sex. Mm. But businesses care whether you fight, steal, or threaten. So there's a difference in morals and ethics. Right. So you got to teach your children what is right and wrong. It's your responsibility. And if you're grandparents raising your children up, you got just as much responsibility. Just like me, I'm telling you, on the first go round, I messed up. Because I raised them up based on what I thought was right. So I didn't raise my children up in the admonition of the Lord. Right. But God today has made me a spiritual father to teach others how to raise their children up in the admonition of the Lord. Yes, they're successful, but some of them are out without God. Right. How can I give them God and I ain't got it? That's right. So you got to have God in you to give it to them. Is that all right, everybody? Amen. 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 Then he says, you know, what about the watchman? So if he keep the city, the watchman. You're talking about the police, the sheriff, the state trooper, the military. Now think about this. Now, y'all might not have no problem, but in Houston, they got policemen and everything. Why so much crime? Because God is out of the city. People don't realize that. You can get all the policemen you want, you ain't going to stop crying. Because people don't have morals and ethics. And except the Lord be of the home. See, it all starts what about at the home. You don't send your children off to, to what? To learn how to live for the Lord. It starts at the what? House. Yes. He said keep it. That means to protect and to what? And to provide for. So we need to understand that. See, is your home under the banner of God's love? Mm -hmm. I mean under God's love, not up under your love. Because right. I tell everybody, we think we know how to love, but nobody loves like God. Amen. None of us love like God. Amen. He's a forgiving God. He don't care around grudges on him. He always forgives. Forgiveness is to release and set free. Right. It means to counsel. Do y'all know what forgiveness means? It means to counsel and set free. And God always counsel our sins and set us free. Companies spend billions of dollars every year marketing their products as well as their brand. And it works. Kleenex and Windex. When you start thinking about window cleaning, first thing you think about is what? Kleenex. Am I right? You think about, uh, uh, I mean, Windex. And then when you think about uh, the ones for your nose or your hands, you think about Kleenex. They got that. It's still in our mind. But you got other type of products that are similar to them. 
Our obsession with consumerism has made us increasingly greedy and unsatisfied. But there is something oddly spiritual about the power of branding when it comes to our relationship with Jesus Christ. People are taught that in order to be successful, they must build their brand. Listen to this, everybody. Self-image, self-identity, self-expression are everything in our world. We've given our children all this comfort, all this entertainment, all these pleasures, but they're empty and they are going around depressed. They got more stuff today than we ever had. When daddy sent us to the bedroom, it wasn't nothing but a bed. It wasn't no lampstand, no lamp, and no TV. Right. If he sent you to bed at four o'clock, that was it. But you send your children to the bedroom, they got laptops, iPads, cell phones, TVs. They glad to go to the room. <laughs> it is all about us. Who we are. Who we want to be. How we want to be seen. Isn't that what our children want to do? And they getting discouraged. We are taught that our image is more important than truth. That's what they're talking about. My image is more important than truth. When it comes to those who profess Jesus Christ as Lord, we must exchange our image and desires for God's glory and Christ's image. As Christians, we have come under a new banner, which is Christ's banner. It is the banner we submit to and follow. It is the banner we carry with us wherever we go. It is the banner that one other see and when they encounter it, but it all starts at home. Children's training start at home. Our training start where about? At home. You don't want no, you don't want your company to train you. You don't want your school system to train you. You don't want your neighbor to train you. You want the Lord to train you. Amen. 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 Home is where the story begins. The first place a baby comes is home. When you get out of the hospital, where's your first place you take your baby? Home! And you got to wait about six weeks before you take him into the public because you got to get the shots first. Amen? Amen. The question, when the baby come home, who's at the house? And when the baby come home, what's in the house? Right. Think about that. Who's in the house and what's in the house? Is that all right, everybody? What are the morals? the values and ethics in the home. Is the parents setting it or is God setting the morals, the values and the ethics? Okay. Now that's something we need to understand. Because okay. we men are hollow, oh, I'm the head of the household. No, you ain't the head of nothing. You need to take your orders from God. That's right. And then you set things in order like God wanted to be done. You don't work outside the parameters of what God, I'm talking to Christians. Right. Am I right? I hope so. Amen. <laughs> Except God build a home spiritually, we what? Labor in vain. Except God builds the city spiritually, what we labor in vain is useless. Right. For me to go to work, work hard, stay up all night, and my children cause me headache late at night. Right. I can't sleep. I'm trying to wonder where they're at, what they got into, why? Because what I gave them, it was in vain. Yes, I sent them to school. Yes, I gave them a car. Yes, I helped them get their first home. But it's all in vain. Right. Amen. Amen. She can put this up on the screen, the arrow example, everybody. The arrow example, see? You know when you get an arrow, when you get an arrow, this is not an arrow, but it got to come from a tree limb. Mm -hmm. Am I right? Right. It's got to come from a tree limb. Right. And you got to cut the things off. I don't know nothing about making no arrow, but to get it down to the size, you got to shave it down, to put a point on it, and everything got to put the feathers on it to get a weight on it, and you want it to hit the target, and the target you want them to hit is Jesus. Right. That's work. That's right. That's work. You can't let MTV and cell phones raise your children. Amen. And then expect your children to come out. Why are they acting like that? Because you letting them re read cell phones and iPads and staying on TV all day. Mm -hmm. See? So what we got to do, look at First thing about a child. They must be carefully shaped and formed. Mm -hmm. Children. That's work. Mm -hmm. Guess who responsibility that is? The daddy. It ain't the mamas. Right. 
They must be carefully shaped and formed. They must be guided with skill and strength. That means you got to teach them something. You got to show them that they're going to come up against some things in life. They're going to need some strength and some grace from God. And you can't give them grace from God. Only God can give them grace to what they need to go through. Mm -hmm. They must be given care or they will not fly straight. If you don't give your children tender love and care, they're not going to hit the mark. They must be aimed and given direction. They will not fly straight on their own. A lot of us think because we put nice clothes on and send them off to school, they're going to fly straight morally, ethically, and have values. They won't fly straight on their own. So you got to stay personally involved daily with your children. Amen. 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 They are, in some respects, only lunch once. When you shoot that arrow, that's it. That's it. You get one chance from about 1 to 18, mm -hmm. 0 to 18, mm -hmm. or 21. You don't get one time to lunch your children. Mm -hmm. You don't get, because once then they have an adult. Mm -hmm. You get one chance. And you got to really be, be carefully shaped and formed. You got to actually be trying to teach your children what is right and what is wrong. And guess what? You can teach them by your example. That's right. Amen. You can teach them morals. We know back then you couldn't even say the word lie coming up. You had to say they was telling a story. Right. But you couldn't even say that a grown folks was telling a story. You might say, Daddy, he ain't telling the truth. But you better not say that grown man ain't telling a story. Right. Right. Amen. Amen. Now these children will call you that L word. They lying. Right. That, was, that was a cuss word. Right. If you say that when we were coming up, all right? Still is. All right? They are extensions of the warrior strength and accompaniment. Right. Guess what? Your children are a reflection of you. you that's right. Mm. Mm -hmm. That hurts. Right. That hurts. Because you're going to say, where did I go wrong? Mm -hmm. I'm serious. Now that don't mean that you did something wrong all the time. Because guess what? Eli had Hophni and Phinehas. That's right. And ain't none of David's children did what was right. That's right. <laughs> and he was a man after God's own what? Heart. So it don't mean you always did right. But you need to go to bed and know that you raised your children up in the admonition of the what? Of the Lord. That's right. They have potential for much good or evil. Right. Now that's what you need to be thinking about. You want to raise your children up with all the potential of what's good, mm -hmm. what's best, what's better, what's benevolent, what's beautiful, what's blessed. Mm -hmm. That's what you want them to have. You want them to be a benefit to other people. Right. Oh, Y'all see that? Mm -hmm. And you got to shoot that arrow and you got to shoot it what? You got one time right. to launch it. Think about it. You don't get a second bite of the apple. And thank God my children don't want a second bite of the apple. They don't want to come back and stay with me. <laughs> they know they got to go to church. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You're not standing in my house. That's the agreement when you walk back in. You know you got to serve the Lord. Huh? Well, I'm grown. I said, well, what you asking to stay with me for if you're grown? <laughs> but you got to worship the Lord because, see, the devil get loose. If you got a person not serving God and you serving God, the devil going to get in that person and going to tear your whole house up. And then you and your wife arguing at one another. Well, it's quiet now. <laughs> we must know when they're nurturing discipline in order for our children to hit the mark. That is in Christ Jesus. Let's look at uh, Ephesians 6. 1 through 4. It says, Children, obey your parents. What about? In the Lord. For this is what? Right. Honor thy father and mother. Children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. Honor thy father and thy mother. You know mainly who they talk to there? Mm -hmm. Grown children. Right. Automatically, little children honor their parents. Right. But those grown children, yes, mother, no. honor your mother and your father all the days of your life. You highly respect them. You got no business using vulgarity and language toward your parents. Amen. I've never done that. Amen. Because I knew if I did as an adult, I got to go see Jesus. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> see, that was seriously. Some people get mad. And they use words harshly toward their own mom and dad, and they're grown. Amen. You ain't got to be in the house. Just go out the door and keep going. Right. 
Is that right, everybody? <laughs> yeah. Which is the first commandment with what? Promise. That it may be well with thee and that thou mayest live long on the earth. When children are raised up from here, you got from zero to three, that's why you teach them their morals, their values, and ethics. Mm -hmm. That's where the work is done, where they shape them. That's when you do the shaping. Mm -hmm. You don't wait when they get up. Right, too late. All right? Mm -hmm. And guess what? When you teach them to obey, know why? Because when the police will stop them, they know to be quiet and obey. Amen. Amen. That's true. Amen. They are taught to obey. When they go on the job, they know to obey. Right. You're not, you, I, I hired you. You didn't hire me. Uh -huh. I'm talking about when they go on the job. And then they don't want to obey the man. He don't want to pay their salary. Right. So they got to learn to what? Obey. That's right. And you fathers, hold on. Provoke not your children. Don't make your children mad. I mean, the wrath means you make them angry where they want to fight you. Uh -huh. Now, you know when your children are angry and stirring them all up, leave them alone. Right. You got a later date to talk to them about an issue, but when you see them mad, don't provoke them where they make you. You make them what? Say something or y'all get in the hookup. But bring them up in the what? The nurture and the admonition of the Lord. Now, young men, how many of us are literally bringing our children up in the nurture and the admonition of the Lord? Right. That's all I'm asking. You think that? Right. Of the Lord. Am I bringing my children up? I'm not saying bringing them to church. Right. I'm talking about bringing them up right. Monday, right. Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Are you bringing them up in the admonition of the Lord? Although raised in the same home, children are different in temperament, abilities, skills, attitudes, and gifts. Your children are different. So one child has a certain gift to do certain things. You can't say, well, this one like this, they're different. Raised up in the same home and everything. And I know all my brothers and siblings, I'm the youngest of them. If it weren't for my dad, I wouldn't have graduated from high school. But I know. I can't come in there with that type of report card. My daddy never gave you a word of encouragement that I can remember about. I'm seriously. Encourage you about, you know, if you bought in some good grades and he had, uh uh. You know when he ain't happy, bring him a bad one. <laughs> he used reverse psychology on you. Huh? He say, you, you know if you bring him a bad one, you know what's going to happen to you. Right. Lord have mercy. And you go to your mama begging her and say, can you stand in? Can you be a mediator for me? Because <laughs> she knew my daddy would beat up his children. <laughs> he says, except. We're going to look at that. Except the what? The Lord build the what? The house. What? They labor. Let's go back and look at that. Except. That means exclusive. That's the mean exclusive. Except. Now do you see your name in that scripture? I want you to think about it. When I read that, he's making a point except the Lord. Bill. That means put things together to make it stronger with love, joy, peace, compassion, light, health, forgiveness, mercy, patience, and grace. That means that God got to build a house so that you can, children can what? Hit the target. And also, it said keep. Y'all see that? Except the Lord keep what? The city. Keep. That means to protect. To defend. That means that he says that that's to give it the necessary nutrients. We don't, I tell everybody, and let me tell y'all this here. Wonder why. So now, I know some of y'all out there carrying something that a ball can shoot down the street. Y'all know what that is, don't you? Ain't none of y'all got something y'all call that a bar can shoot, I mean go down the street. <laughs> That's a gun. We got guns in our cars. All right? We got alarms on the house. We got alarms on the car. We got all that stuff and people still break in. But except the Lord. Keep the city, the watchman waketh, but in vain. You doing all that stuff in vain. 
If we get the Lord in our families and it radiates to the community, the community is going to be healthy. And guess where it starts with? It starts with you. Every last one of us in here, it starts with you. Don't be worried on me to do it all. You do it. When you get back to your house, you do what God wants you to do and try to share with your neighbor so they can get what they want to do and it permeates out to the neighborhood. Y'all see that, am I right? Then it says sleep. Sleep means to what? They waketh in vain. That means to rest, to revitalize, and to restore. And guess what? Labor means to what? Work hard. Great effort. To please our children. Question with what? How many of us today tell that we have to, we have to explain things to our children? Now, when we were brought up, when they told you something, you obeyed. Right. You need to teach, everybody need to teach their children, don't be asking me why. How can a 12 year old understand your reason why you're doing what you do? That's right. So if you give him why you're doing it, he'll never understand it anyway. They need to learn to what? Obey. Because when they learn to obey, they're going to obey in every respect of their life. They're going to leave the house and obey their teachers. Amen? Right. And you, let's look here. It is in vain for you to rise up early. To sit up late, to eat the bread of sorrows, for so he giveth his beloved what? Sleep. Watch it. Lo, children are an heritage of who? I want y'all to read it with me. Let's get it. This is going to be good. Lo, children are an heritage of who? I'm going to read it one more time. Lo, children are inherited of who? Of the Lord. They ain't yours. That's his reward. That's right. Mm. right. You finna see something else in this scripture here. Watch here. And the fruit of the womb is what? A reward. No, it's what? A reward. A reward. The fruit of the womb is what? So what you say? It didn't say her reward. Who say the fruit in the womb is hers? Hmm. So is her reward. Hmm. You got the right to do what you want with your body? The Bible says, that's what the word God says. It's his reward. What's in that womb belongs to God. Amen. It ain't yours. Amen. You have a right to do it. Say what you want to do with it. That's his. Amen. That's, that's, that's why I tell people, when you get into the word of God, it eliminates all this hypothetical American type thinking. Right. Amen. It eliminates it. It's here. Now I'm asking you this. Ladies, anybody here made your own womb? Raise your hand. <laughs> hmm? None of us made it. Am I right? Men, did any of you in here made your own seed? You just, God just allow you to participate in the creative process. Right. Everything belongs to God. Right. That fruit in the womb, if I had a bag, i take that fruit out. It belongs to God. I hear this stuff going in the American culture today, but I'm trying to tell us as families, you need to tell people, show it to them in the scripture. If they say they're a child of God, they say they're a Christian, let them know that's his child. That's right. That's right. Mm, is that all right, everybody? Amen. Amen. I know it's quiet. Amen. You know why? Because we need to get this teaching back. Amen. And when we was coming up, we had no problem with this type of teaching. Right. But now, mm -hmm. I tell everybody, this uh, is this a little, little longer than a, a root. This is 12 inches. I was born in 1953. All right? <laughs> okay? 1963, this was what? A ruler. So one, one foot, am I right? I think that's a foot, 16. All right? 1973. A foot, am I right? 1983, a foot. 1993, a foot, am I right? Uh, what, 93, 2003, a foot. 2013, a foot. 2022, a foot. All right. Now, this rule ain't changed. Why come what was right in 53 is wrong today? Amen. Right. Why? Ain't nothing changed but us. Right. If it was wrong back in 53, it's wrong today. Amen. If it was sin back then, it's sin now. Amen. Am 
God making us see things yeah. and we don't want to admit it. That's right. We just don't want to admit it. We come up with all these hypothetical things in life. If this happened, if that happened, you not God. There's nothing too hard for God. Jesus said with God all things are possible. It's too hard for you, but it ain't too hard for God. Give it to God and he'll work it out to the good. Give God his glory. God is a good God. All things work together to the good of those who love the Lord and are called according to his purpose. My God will never fail you at no time, no matter what you get through, God will deliver you because he's in the delivery business. Give God his glory. Amen. 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 A lot of us don't understand that. Amen. Something come up, no you can't resolve it. Give it to God. Amen. 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 Look what it says. As arrows are in the hand of a what? A mighty man. A mighty man is a man who got wisdom and got truth and he knows how to shape his children. So are children of thy youth. When you're supposed to have children? When you're young. I can't run behind him. Like, Wes got them boys back there. I can't run behind him. But I bet you he can run behind him and grab behind him back his collar and say, come here, son. You know how children like to take off and run on you? Huh? You know how children like to run off? You know how them little children, they take off running. I can't catch them. <laughs> but when I was young, I'd run and catch them in the back of their collar and pull them up. All right? That's what I'm talking about. Watch it. Happy is the man that hath his quiver. What? If something wrong, we see somebody having more than one children, one child a day. Look what the, look what the word of God. Happy is the man that hath his quiver. What? Full. Full of them. Mm -hmm. Have plenty of children. Mm -hmm. There ain't nothing wrong with having children. Today we act like something wrong with having children. What has happened to us? When we went to school, everybody had six, seven, eight, and eleven. <laughs> everybody. And you'll say, oh, my mom got more children than you. You know what I mean? You know what I mean? But today, somebody come to your house with four children, you look at them strange. <laughs> Having men that have a watch you. They say not, they shall not be what? Ashamed. Those children who maybe gave you the struggles when you were coming up, when they get to be adults, they're going to be your glory. Why? They shall speak with the enemies in the gate. Why? When you get older, they're going to take care of you. Somebody bother you. They hear that somebody bother with mom and dad. You ain't got to worry. They finna pull up in a few minutes. They're going to protect their parents. That's why they tell you to have your quiver, quiver full of what? Children. Children are a blessing from the Lord. I love grandchildren now. Lord have mercy. I love grandchildren. I got nine of them. No. I got six girls, that's why I got nine of them. <laughs> All right? But guess what? I love the grandchildren. Right. Amen? Right. Grandchildren, I should have had grandchildren first. Right. Amen? <laughs> See, we need God to teach our descendants how, how to, to live and have their mind. As we get ready to go to the close for the last scripture we're going to use, let's look at Deuteronomy. Chapter 6. We're talking about the family, everybody. It starts at home. This is serious business, everybody. Serious business. We're going to start with verse 4. This is Moses. See, now Moses is giving them instruction how to raise their children. Deuteronomy 6, verses 4. Are y'all there? Mm -hmm. 6 verse 4 says, Hear, O Israel, mm -hmm. the Lord our God is what? One. one. There's no other God but one. Because mm -hmm. they're going into a land where they got many gods. Right. Our God is just one God. Mm -hmm. And who is one Lord. And thou shalt love the Lord thy God with what? All thine what? Heart. With all your soul and with all your might. Here's a strength. Watch you. And these words which I command thee this day shall be what about? In thine what? Heart. Mm -hmm. Daddies, it's got to be up here. Right. The word of God got to be what about? Mm -hmm. Up here. 
if you're trying to raise them up off of your own intellect or what you think or what you see what is right in the community, you're going to raise them wrong. Right. See why he say, heal Israel? And it's the message is coming from God shall be in that heart. And thou shalt teach them what? Diligently. That means you got to teach them steadfast application. Right. Steadfast. Diligent means steadfast application. Unto thy children and shall talk to them. So you got to teach and talk. Right. All right, watch here. Teach and talk of, of, of them when thou win, when they what? Sit Sits down. So when y'all sit around the table eating, you're supposed to be talking about the Lord to them. That's what he's talking about. When thou sittest. Now I tell everybody, if you have gotten rid of the kitchen table, you have gotten, gotten rid of the strength of the family. When we used to, mama used to cook, everybody sat around the table together and ate. And that's where conversation was shared and where everybody got built up. But if you go buy me a personal pan pizza, this one a Whopper, and this one a chicken box, and each person goes into the room. See that? So they all need to be sitting together as a family eating their dinner. I don't care if they all got fast food, they need to sit together and eat it. All right, look here. And thou in thine house, and when thou what, walkest? By the way, so if you take your children fishing, hunting, or you knitting, or whatever you take them to, you guess what? When y'all going about their way, you need to be what? Talking about the Lord and teaching them about the Lord. You don't have to be quoting scriptures, but by the way your example, and you modify life before them, you are teaching them. Then he says, when that in that house, and when thou what, walkest by the way, and when thou what, lies down. How many men here teach their children how to pray? Hmm? Teach them the 23rd Psalm. Huh? Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. In earth as in heaven. Forgive us of our debts as we forgive our debtors. Am I right? right. Did we, not only did we learn that at home, the teachers taught it. Right. They don't do that no more. Look here. It said, then when thou lies down, when thou rises up in the morning. So when they get up, morning, noon, night, walking by the way, we're supposed to be teaching and raising our children. What about up in the admonition of the Lord? And thou shalt bind them for a sign upon thine hand, and they shall be frontless. What? Between thine eyes. That means we got to build, put an imprint and an impress in our children. When now? And thou shalt write them upon the what? Any y'all got any sins in your house? As for me and my house, we will what? Serve the Lord. I tell everybody that. Fathers, granddaddies, and everybody. It ain't too late to start teaching your children. I tell everybody. Because I blew it on the front end, I ain't got to continue to blow it. That's right. Sometimes you got to have a little talk with your family and let them know this is what we're going to start serving the Lord. Right. Children might not like it. I'm not saying you can't take them to baseball games. I'm not saying you can't take them to football games. I'm not saying you can't take them to Disney World. I'm just saying that when you on a daily basis, you need to raise them up. Where about? In the admonition what? of the Lord. I think I'm finna, uh, I'm finna let it go because your, your daughter gave me a sign over there uh, early. I, I, I had a sister in my church always give me a sign. When I see them my eyes do that, I say it's time to quit. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to let you go, baby. <laughs> I'm going to stop here. But I'm hoping that what I'm sharing with y'all, and if I call your name, it's not to hurt you or nothing like that, just to let you know that sometimes you use that so people can see that we're living in a real life and we got to serve the Lord, y'all. And I'm hoping that we got to strengthen one another. And y'all got a fine congregation, everybody. You know why I say that? I come here and people are working together, getting things good. Y'all getting the aesthetics looking good and everything. But then the people are coming on a Saturday night. And the point I want to make to you all right here, for me to be standing up here preaching the word of God on a Saturday night, that song that he sung, I have been redeemed. I've been redeemed. You know what I did on Saturday? I left out the house at 11 o'clock on midnight, by midnight. I didn't come home till when daylight broke. That's when I went out. And for me to be up here preaching the word of God, I have been redeemed because I wasn't serving the Lord at all. From, Z, from the age I got baptized at age 36, I was not serving the Lord at all. But God can do wonders with you when he redeems your life and turn you around. Amen. Amen. Amen.
I did what I got to do to be saved. I got to hear the gospel of Jesus Christ, where he died for my sins, buried and rose on the third day. I must confess that Christ is the Son of the true living God, and I must go into a water grave, a baptism to wash away all my sins, as we now stand and sing the song of invitation.